but I mean, the, the title says the rebuilding the food system for the future, but I'm going to talk about that. In a way, I'm going to talk about that, but really what I'm going to talk about is rebuilding our world for the future and how the food system is really in the forefront of how, how that's going to happen. You know, I come from, like many of you in this room, um, I'm assuming, but at least the ones I know, from uh, a, a, a generation where the differences in the world were divided between left and right, and where we were very sure of our views and our, our positions. They came from ideologies, political ideologies, that were developed in the, in the uh, 19th, 18th century, whether right, left, or center, whether liberalism, conservatism, social democracy, Marxism, but there's a problem, which is it's a way of looking at the world from the top down. They started from a level much higher than where most people lived. And, and if reality didn't fit into those frameworks, then you just ignored the reality. And you looked at the, re shaped the reality to fit the framework that you had. What's happening now is that at a local level, because so many governments were captured by this false prophet of neo, what we call neoliberalism, the false prophet, the false idea that this is the way that prosperity will happen. But you know, the only kind of prosperity that's happened is prosperity for the rich. And now even they're getting hit. Now they're getting, uh, because of the Wall Street crash, now they're getting hit by their own greed. They're getting hurt by a 50% decline in stocks. 50%. You know what that feels like. That's not something new to you. We saw the prices for your beef, how, how, how they dropped, right? Well, now the rich people are getting hit too. And so we have a perfect storm because all around the world, and Neo Campesino is one of the most important movements in this, all around the world, people have been building local alternatives. People have been building new ways of change. And the food system, I think, it's the most advanced, this, all these alternatives. All of the alternatives, your struggle to save the family farm, the organic food movement, the, the, the um, community gardens, rooftop gardens, um, uh, you know, food to table operation. In Toronto, we have a thing called food share, and there's a few of them around. They didn't like the charity model of the food bank, so they created new models of sharing, of delivering food directly from farmers into communities and setting up community, in a community centers to distribute the food. All of these movements, not coordinated at all. They're not coordinated. They're all organized out of need and out of uh, an identification at a local level of the problem, and then it spreads. Whether it spreads through groups like Via Campesino that's organizing it, or it spreads virally because we now have a way for that to happen. We can do it. You can do it. And that, you know, we've been facing a triple crisis in our world. A crisis of inequality, which has now become an economic crisis. A crisis, an environmental crisis, and a crisis of despair. That is that people don't like the way things are. They're suffering the way things are. That they don't, they believe that the power are so great, there's nothing they can do about it. This is what I run into most among young people. They don't believe they can change things. That's the biggest barrier. And what Obama has done, what the Obama campaign has done, is convince people in the United States, which is very important because it has been up until now the only superpower in the world, convince them that they can change the world, that they can change their society, that they can change their communities. And that's happening there, but it's not just happening there. It's happening all around the world. In Latin America, we have the rise in Bolivia of an indigenous government that is phenomenal. Like, talk about the values that you've expressed in this conference. All of them they're putting forward. And they're governing the combination of indigenous values and the best ideas of the left, is how I would say it. And they're, you know, even under attack from the right and violent attack from the right, they will not use violence in response. They use the law in response and back them off. It's an amazingly hopeful situation in Bolivia, in Venezuela, 
even in places like Brazil, where maybe uh, the president of Brazil isn't doing as much as we want, but there are starting to be changes. And we have movements like Via, uh, Via Campesino and the landless movement. Not only do they take over land and, and, and demand that the government hand them over to, for landless people, land that isn't being used, but they create community on, the, on that land. They, they, they educate people. They build communities. When they decide to take a policy position, they discuss it through all their communities, not just in an executive or a central committee, through all their communities. It's an amazing movement that's really a model for what can be done. So what I see when I look around the world is that new movements are emerging, whether it's in the global south, in uh, the global north, on the internet, because on the internet too, there's movements. Like, you know, it took me a while to realize this, but the open source movement uh, on the internet is an incredible movement that challenges capitalism, because there's a system where people share their knowledge. They don't, or nobody owns the knowledge, they share it, they build new code, and they're giving Microsoft a run for their money in terms of the quality of the product that they're producing. But there's also piracy. Now, I want to talk a minute about piracy. Well, you know, when you first look at this, you, you think, well, it's stealing. It's stealing. But when you look at the systems of music, for example, or even film, and you, you see exactly the same story that we saw in the research project this morning. Other than Hollywood stars, the producers, the actual producer of the wealth, the person who's producing the wealth, creating the wealth, gets the least amount of money. And it's the distributors who get the money, right? So the, so the distributors get all the money. So what pirates are doing, what this piracy movement is doing, is challenging this very system of distribution, this very system, economic system, that means that the corporations up here are making all the money and the people down here who are either building the cars or farming the land or writing the song don't get it. Know that you are part of a massive movement that's saying, let's take back control. We can do it. We can take back control. And, and all of it has very similar qualities, which is it's from the bottom up, not from the top down. It's not about consultants telling you what to do. It's about you figuring out what to do. You know best how a sustainable agriculture system is going to work. You're the farmers. You know how to do it. But you can't do it yourself. And you can't do it just by making demands on the government like we used to think. But you can do it by linking up with the environmentalists in your area, by linking up with the local food piece. So we have the, this double storm of the crisis of capitalism combined with the environmental crisis, but we have the other perfect storm of the coming together, the convergence of movements. And this is what's so powerful. And for here we have the convergence of the farmer, the movement for sustainable and family farms, the environmental movement, and the social justice movement through food security. In the United States right now, the most powerful movement is the green jobs movement, because what's happened is a coming together of black urban activists who have been using the idea of, of um, a sustainable <clears throat> of green jobs to hire kids from the ghetto. So there's a wonderful project I really, uh, I really um, uh, encourage you to look it up called the Greening of the South Bronx, organizing to recapture the land that was destroyed by freeways, okay, because that's what destroyed the land to begin with, and the social housing, reclaiming this freeway that nobody uses anymore, reclaiming it, and building sustainable housing that's also green housing on the place where the free, freeway used to be, like how strong a metaphor, how much stronger a metaphor can you have than that? And now Obama, who's looking for a new New Deal, is, gonna, is bringing in a new Green Deal based on the program that this movement created, just like you're creating an alternative food system, every day creating it. That food system will grow and grow. And then when we do get to the point of having leadership that's interested in changing the food system, those ideas that have come from the bottom up, that have come from the people most involved who know how to solve the problem, those ideas will be already be there. Just like Obama can now take the green jobs ideas and apply them. And he has a complete program that came from the bottom up, that didn't come from the top down. And I'll end on that.